Hey folks, how are we all doing? Brendan here from the Blue Light Group. First of all, I'd just like to welcome all of you who are new members. Amazing to have you on board in what is the most incredible, incredible group, solely focused on police recruitment and on furthering your career once you're actually in the police. So great to have you on board. Uh, almost 20,000 people now part of our community. Uh, last time I looked at the data, there's over 13,000 active members. Yep, Facebook provides me with a little bit of data. Over 13,000 of you who are active. Honestly, I can't keep up with all the posts and comments, but I do my best, I do my best. And yes, it is almost like a full-time job. So welcome, welcome. Um, and if you're watching this on a recording later on elsewhere, and you're thinking, what is this group? Then just check the links below. I'll put something there for you so that you can join this amazing community. It's about five years old now, almost 20,000 people. Incredible. So um, in this Facebook Live, I'm going to take a bit of a look at the reality of the online assessment process. Because what, what struck me last night when I did the introductory webinar for course number two of 2022 to prepare them for the online assessment center and this is something that goes in conjunction with my online course the online course provides a knowledge and understanding the practical webinars give you exactly that the practice so last night i invited uh, anyone and everyone to the start of course number two and uh, when i was explaining what the online assessment center really involved it really struck me that so many of you are so unprepared in that you don't know what to expect and the College of Policing Guidance serves to confuse more than anything else and is incorrect in many different places. So what I'm going to do in this Facebook Live, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Online Assessment Centre. But of course, if, you, if you're watching this and you've got any questions about the police recruitment process, then please do put something in the comments. Uh, please do ask away, comment away, love and like. The more you do that, the more Facebook pushes it out to other people. If you sit back and you're passive, Facebook thinks, oh, no one's interested. So I'm not going to send it to anyone else. That's just the way Facebook works. Anyway, let's do some shout outs before I talk about the online assessment center. I know I should, I should timetable these, shouldn't I? I should say at this time, on this date, I'm going to go live. Instead, I just think, right, I've got a little bit of time free. Uh, tonight, just, drop, just taking the kids swimming. Uh, just got back from their swimming lessons. I'm going to be cooking tea soon. Yes, I live in the north of England, so we have tea in the evenings. <laughs> I know the rest of you have dinner. We have tea. We live in Yorkshire. North Yorkshire, to be precise. Anyway, some shout-outs. Uh, Shout-out to Aaron and John and Samantha. Uh, Formic Thirds. Formic, so well done on your achievements so far. I can't believe you've been in for a year. Um, just amazing, amazing story. Uh, take a look at Durham Constabulary's Facebook page folks you'll see my friend formic thirds there uh toto is watching tim saying hi brendan back at you and so sigh uh, back at you sigh how are you uh, tim george david and owen and others watching this live like i said any questions please ask any comments post them and feel free to love and like I, I, it, it lets me know that people are actually listening <laughs> so Right, the online assessment centre. I'm going to see what if I can, let's see what time is in it. It's about right. Okay, so what I'm going to do? I'm going to try and cover it in about five minutes. I know some of you might be thinking, Brendan, you can't cover anything in five minutes. It's true. It's true. Um, so the online assessment centre. There was a replacement when COVID came along for the day one assessment centre and the search assessment centre. Search assessment centre. This is one where you had to pretend to be a customer services officer, role plays, staff role plays, and stuff like that. It was so outdated, it had to go anyway. Plus, it discriminated against people who were black and from visible ethnic camp communities. Uh, I know some people are gonna say, oh, how do you know that? Well, college policing data tells me the adverse impact ratio was less than 0 0.80, which means that in the United States, of all places, it would be unlawful. It'd be contrary to federal law. You couldn't even run it. Uh, the, the new replacement, the day one that the Met were trialing was no better. <laughs> it was no better. That had an adverse impact ratio of 0 0.80, which meant that would have been unlawful in America as well. 
Now, if you want to know more about the adverse impact ratio, just uh, tap it into Google. It'll tell you about what it means and why 0 0.80 is the magic number. Anyway, so they had to go anyway. So COVID came along and it was quite fortunate for both of those uh, disasters that um, COVID came along because it meant College of Policing could replace it with them with something new. So they came up with an online assessment process. The problem, I think, for this, for the service, is that you can go through the online assessment centre and not speak to a real person. There's no human contact whatsoever. And for some police forces, Avon and Somerset Police, uh, West Midlands Police, Wiltshire, Hampshire, Thames Valley, I believe, temporarily, Merseyside Police, temporarily, and I know it's temporary for Merseyside Police because I've spoken to Serena, their Chief Constable, about it. And she said it's a temporary, temporary, temporary. Um, so that they don't run any kind of interview after the online assessment centre. So you're in. <laughs> you can join the police and not speak to a real person. I know it's amazing, isn't it? You can join this police and not speak to anyone until your first date. Actually, I take that back because at your medical, someone might ask you about, so what's this eczema history? And at your, your uniform fitting, someone's going to go, what's your inside leg? measurement but those questions have got nothing to do with your ability to be a police officer you see how bonkers this is but it's there for the taking you know if police forces are going to make the decisions that that's all you need to do then you might as well just go for it go for it go for it go for it and with my help and support you're gonna pass it you <laughs> I guarantee you're gonna pass it um honestly no honestly I do if you look at my website I actually guarantee you that you'll pass it you'd I'll show you the way you do the hard work. If you don't pass, I give you a refund. It's as simple as that. Um, it's a no-brainer. I've only given two refunds over the past year. So, no-brainer. Uh, so, where are we up to? Situational judgment test is the first part. Uh, this is where they're going to present you with 12 scenarios, and you've got to decide which one is the best one out of the four. It's multiple choice. Multiple guess for some of you. I like, don't like to do multiple guess, though. And they're going to give you advice that says... Um, act naturally, answer the questions honestly, and um, just be yourself. It's the worst advice ever. How to pass that, how to ace it, do not act naturally, do not be yourself, and do not answer the questions honestly. It's right, you're not telling a lie, you're playing a game. You didn't invent the game, the College of Policing did. You need to pass it. Or you can be as honest as you want and Answer the questions as honest, honestly as you want and you might fail, but well done. You answered the questions as honestly as you could, you acted naturally and you just were yourself, but you failed. So that's a bit pointless, isn't it? So uh, there's a little trick here. It's a really simple one. Actually, uh, on Thursday for course number two of 2022, I'm going to prove to them that those three things are the case, that those three bits of advice from the College of Policing are worst the worst advice ever i'm going to prove it to them beyond all reasonable doubt a little exercise and run um, and they're going to love it and it'll really stick in their heads that right that's the mindset i need to have to pass the situational judgment test so some of you might be doing behavioral situation uh, questionnaire because or behavioral styles questionnaire because some forces int have introduced their own thing i know confusing um sally's so saying i know a lot of people don't like it, but I really enjoyed the online assessment centre. The reason why you enjoyed it, Si, is because I was right behind you. I don't mean physically, <laughs> but um, you were on one of my courses. You were go always going to pass it because you were on one of my courses. Haley's saying, I need all the help I can get. I was invited to apply for expression of interest post prior to recruitment window, now on the SJT, but not got the guts to start yet. Um, join us tomorrow night, Haley. Take the plunge course two of 2022 um honestly you'll get to the end of tomorrow night and go ah <laughs> it's that easy um Sai so saying uh brennan has a mock sjt test online i believe give that a go it's a good indicator Haley. <sighs> thank you Sai. um and how is so size going on I'll, I'll admit i thought don't be yourself uh lying was wrong but then i failed <laughs> Uh, doing what you taught me turned me into, hang on, let's just read this. 
uh, doing what you taught me turned me into someone else and I smashed it. <laughs> there you go, there's the proof in the pudding. There it is. Um, well done, Sai. Uh, Sammy's watching. Hello, Sammy, how are you doing? Um, and Paul's watching as well. Some, some of my uh, favourite clients are watching this evening. Good to have you on board. Anyway, from there you move on to the interview. Uh, where's my interview guidance? Um, where, there it is. Um, where they're going to ask you five questions. Integrity, public service, transparency, we take ownership and we're innovative, open-minded. Um, I know. <laughs> uh, three questions from the values, two questions from the competencies. There's no one at the other end, by the way. You're videoed. It's a, it's a pre-record that's asking you the questions. You've got five minutes to answer the questions. You're being recorded during that process. Um, and it just freaks a few people out because there's no one at the other end and, and you've just got to get used to speaking to the camera. And the way to do that is by doing what I'm doing at the moment. Just speak to the camera and record yourself. Play it back. Get over yourself, by the way, as to what you sound like. Get over your ums and ahs. Get over what you look like because the assessors don't care. They're not interested. And this is not the time to start thinking, this is my opportunity to demonstrate how inspiring the police are and how motivated I am. No, <laughs> just no. This is your opportunity just to tick the boxes. That's all it is. Tick the boxes, that's all. Um, so you might be thinking, oh, transparency. They're gonna ask a question, which is, tell me about a time when you've been transparent. No, 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 no. They don't make it as simple as that. Uh, you need to be able to interpret the values, the competency and values framework. Uh, you don't need to look at the competency and values framework, by the way, because I've done all of that for you. Where's my copy of the competency and values framework? Uh, not that one. There it is. Oh, it's well thumbed mine, my copy, well thumbed. Um, because they introduce you to things like this. There it is, the wheel of confusion. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up if you agree with that. Give me a love or a like if you agree that this is nothing but the wheel of confusion. I mean, what on earth is this all about? Uh, values um, are in the center and support all the competencies. Uh, they only have one level. The competencies come in clusters and they are in three levels, depending on what rank or position you're going for. All right, okay, uh, no, I'm not following you. No, I don't get that. <laughs> Just, what, what the hell are they on about? So I, I spent six, uh, five years in the um, adult education sector when I was in the police. Um, I geeked out on this stuff, by the way. I really enjoyed it. I loved reading books. My holiday reading was like the personnel evaluation standards from the University of Michigan, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> Um, getting involved in debates about the positivist approach and the qualitative research or mixed methods and I, 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 I turned into a geek, I was like a super geek. Uh, went back to university, did a master's in education where I focused on personnel evaluation standards. Got involved in a national steering group in the police to help develop standards and qualifications. That was not on the agenda. <laughs> and I don't understand some of this stuff. Um, and I've got like all those big qualifications and everything. Anyway, you don't have to worry, I've interpreted it for you. So I put together sample questions. Transparency isn't all about transparency, it's about difficult decisions. So there you go. Some sample questions for you. You can just press pause if you're record watching this on the recording. Um, and if you're watching this on the Facebook Live, you, you might have to, oh, I might be back to front. Anyway. Tell me about a time when you've had to make a difficult decision under pressure. Tell me about a time when you've had to make a difficult decision where others haven't agreed with your decision. Tell me about a time when you've had to make a difficult decision where you've had to account for that decision to others. You might be thinking, oh, they're all different questions. No, they're not. They're all the same question, aren't they? They're just worded differently. So any question about transparency is always going to be about decision making. There's my gift to you tonight. All right, let's do some more shout outs before we go to... Uh, stage three, stage two, just ticking the boxes. That's all it is. Tick the boxes. That's all it is. The assessors who are assessing you, um, they've been doing it now for 18 months. They must be bored out of their brains, the same questions, week in, week out. 10 candidates a day they've got to assess. How bored are they? <laughs> they don't even know what force you're from. And most of the assessors, there's almost 700 of them, 
Um, we know this from a freedom of information request. The majority of them have never been police officers. The majority of them, I know this because I've worked with the College of Policing and Fallen College of Policing on four occasions. I've met a lot of the assessors when I worked in the organisational development unit as a, an associate. Most of them have got more grey hair than me. I'm like the youngster compared to a lot of them. So, uh, honestly, they just want to listen to you say certain things so they can tick boxes and give you a big score. That's it. That's it, folks. Um, five questions, five minutes per answer. You're being recorded. Follow my, follow my question guide. Follow the system I give you to develop your answers. You'll be able to talk for five minutes. Practice with me on the webinars to hone your skills. And you're going to ace it. You can't not ace it. You can't not. You can't not. Stage three, College Policing Guidance says you don't need to have any knowledge of policing. Really? <laughs> Stage three written. Oh, it's not 40 minutes, by the way. The guidance says it's 40 minutes. It's not. You've got two hours. Stage three written. They're going to give you a complex antisocial behaviour problem. It's criminal damage, lack of trust in the community, young people causing antisocial behaviour, criminal damage, graffiti. There may be alcohol and drug addiction issues thrown in as well. Complexity, social complexity. Oh, you don't need any knowledge of police. So that's what the College of Policing ask you to do and you've got to problem solve that. So, um, template, I'll give you a template. I spent eight years as an neighborhood inspector. I was on the strategic change branch looking at improving problem solving in Greater Manchester Police for my last year. I worked with the European Union, uh, European Union on the International Advisory Board for a big project that was looking at improving uh, community policing. I've worked as a consultant to forces and councils. This is my thing. This is easy peasy for me. Um, and then they move you on to the stage three briefing. Uh, it's not a briefing. It's you talking for a total of 36 minutes, answering 12 questions about how you're going to deal with a noisy party. It used to be about a drug dealing scenario. I think there's still a few people who are going to end up with a drug dealing scenario. Drug dealing, organised crime, homelessness and vulnerability. Um, so that's still out there. I'm still hearing people who are doing that. Not many of them, but still a few people are ending up doing that. And then, of course, they changed that before Christmas to a noisy party that got completely out of control. <laughs> well, I know so many of my clients who, um, who did this before they came to me, they've failed it and they've come back to me and said, I just spent all my time just referring things to the inspector. Um, it's now, uh, I call it noisy party light. So it's not as chaotic, it's just a noisy party that gets just a little bit out of control. There'll be some safeguarding issues, there'll be some community engagement issues, there'll be some um, lack of understanding between uh, older people, younger people, there'll be some issues for you to deal with. There better add be, because you've got to talk for 36 minutes about it. Anyway, I'm ahead of the game. There's an exercise for you, which apparently, apparently, I've run through it with course number one. And for those of you who have done the online assessment centre since then, you tell me it just nails it. Nails it. Nails it. So, there you go, folks. That's it. The online assessment centre. For many forces, do all of that. Pass it all. You're in. Just got a, a message from someone today who said they've just done, just passed their online assessment centre. They were surprised because they got the stage three was the briefing, was the, the drug dealing one. And uh, they kind of summed it up nicely. They just thought, oh no, this isn't what, I'm, I'm not prepared for this. And I just thought, hang on a minute, what would Brendan do? What would Brendan do? So he says, I just put myself in his shoes, uh, my shoes. And that was it. Passed it, passed it. So anyway, uh, let's see if there's any other questions from those of you who are still here. Awesome to have you on board, like I said. Uh, Daniel, Reese, Jason. Paul is saying, hello, Brendan. Hello, all blue lighters. And the new book is Fab, Brendan. Oh, right. Awesome. Uh, where is it? I was going to do a shameless plug then. <laughs> it's no good if I can't find it. <laughs> if anyone, by the way, who is watching this, who's part of the Blue Light Facebook group, has not got a free copy of it, let me know. Put something in the comments. Let me know. I'll send you a free copy of my book. There you go. How about that? Uh, Charlotte, good evening to you. You're watching. Um... Jason's saying opinions on West Midlands police not having a final interview. Insanity. <laughs> That's but a great opportunity for you. It's insane, but a brilliant opportunity for you. Coming to the end now, if you love or like what I'm talking about, please do put something in the comments. 
please do give me a love or a like. Facebook loves it. I love it. Let's me know that I'm actually making an impact. Um, Emily, how are you? How are you? You're going to be joining us tomorrow evening. Awesome to have you on board. Uh, Holly, uh, Shannon, Jack, Ben, Elizabeth, Ryan, Andrew and Dominic, who's saying, uh, got my attestation in February. Awesome. Found your guides, the framework, etc. Really useful. So thank you. Oh, well done. Um, well, well done, Dominic. So pleased, proud. This is what I love. Every day I get messages from people just saying, oh, I succeeded, Brendan. I passed. It's awesome. Couldn't have done it without you. Actually, you probably could have. But it might have taken you a couple of goes. I show you the way. You do the hard work. You pass. It's that simple. Anyway, folks, it's time to go. Anna and Tris, who've just joined. I'm sorry, I'm about to go now. Uh, but there will be a recording of this available. I'm going to press finish and then you'll be able to uh, watch it later on. If anyone has any further questions, now's the time to answer, ask them. Oh, hang on a minute, let me just see here. Oh, what have we done there? Whoa. Uh, Charlie's just saying, I was speaking to someone who applied for West Midland Police. Got an email today to say that Staffordshire were open. Ooh, that's interesting. That's an interesting development. So what's happening there is that West Midlands Police talent pool, talent pool is probably full. There's a lot of forces who've got talent pools that are full now, which means that they can't give you a start date because they've already got people slotted in for the next year. And they often take the top scoring candidates as well. So you can just sit in that talent pool forever. And that is a thing. I've been doing this now for over a quarter of a century, coaching and supporting people in the police sector to succeed. For the past 11 years, I've been focusing almost exclusively on police recruitment. I've seen it happen so many times. The only way to get yourself out of that talent pool is to score the highest marks possible to make sure you're going to get taken out of it. As soon as you get in it, you get taken out of it. Uh, so it's interesting that. I'd love to see a copy of that email uh be fantastic um and Sai is saying i'll send you a team a link to uh microsoft teams pass out on february the 18th if they'll let me brilliant oh, is it going to be online an online passing out thing oh that'd be great that Sai. either way whether it's online or in person i'd love to attend your passing out parade just down the road from where i live so be brilliant uh kit good evening to you i'll see you tomorrow evening uh, Charlie, uh, get a copy of it, fantastic, that's brilliant. Uh, Rowan's just joining me as I'm about to leave. So, listen folks, um, yeah, Sai saying it's online, unfortunately. I, I'd still love to be there, even, even online. It'd be just great to see so many of you um, passing out. What a proud moment that is. I've, I've done it three times now. <laughs> I've been in three forces, so um, I've been attested three times. Um, fantastic. Just brilliant, brilliant moment. Um, because <laughs> I've got some stories to tell. I won't, I won't bore you with them now, but uh, some stories to tell you about when we were attested for the Bermuda Police. Um, Friday afternoon at the Magistrates Court at Hamilton. <laughs> we had to sit and watch some of the proceedings before we got sworn in. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Anyway, that's another story. So that's something else. All right, folks, listen, time to go. Um, all that remains for me to say is if you're currently working in the police sector at the moment, I love you for what you do to keep us safe. You're amazing. Uh, you are loved by so many people in the communities who don't get the opportunity to tell you how much, just how much you're loved. So uh, you are loved for what you do. And I love you with all my heart. Special kind of love, special kind of love. For those of you who are looking to join the police, then kudos to you. I doth my metaphorical cap to you. What a great job. What, uh, I, I, it's just amazing. Fulfilling in every way possible. Incredible, incredible career ahead of you. You're making the absolute right choice. It's gonna be difficult, it's gonna be challenging. It's gonna impact on you in ways that you can't even imagine. I promise you that. But I also promise you that it's gonna be fulfilling. And that's just something you can't buy. You can't get in other jobs. It's amazing. So I'll catch you with you soon, folks. Take care. Good evening to you all. And bye-bye for now.